Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the hand and dexterity class. Before we begin today, I want to uh, talk about the equipment you're going to be needing today in case anybody is new. So I've got a tea towel that I'm using today. You can see that it's uh, relatively small, so a small-ish tea towel. And um, I've also got a cushion. So this is just a, a cushion I took from my couch. So a small uh, cushion you're going to be needing. And also today for a handwriting practice, uh, line pieces of paper, and I've made the margins smaller. So at the end of last class, we talked about using smaller margins. So I put one, two, three. So you can see three rows on my line paper as one big row. So last time um, and the week before that and the week before that, we were doing four lines as one giant line. Today, we're doing three lines as one giant line. So the margins have gotten a little bit smaller. So we'll put that away on the side because we will be using it today a little bit later on in the class. Now, if you are new to the class today, the uh, sessions have been all recorded and they should be on our YouTube channel, which is Parking Sin Society BC, all in one word. So if there's any of the exercises we're doing today that you're finding a little bit challenging, not to worry. You can always have a look at the uh, previous um, class recordings and practice some of those skills as well, because we um, have been building on the exercises from the beginning. So don't worry if things feel a little bit tough. Um, you can uh, follow along to the best of your abilities. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to type in the chat box um, and then I could answer the questions when I see that coming up. Or if you prefer not to type, you're always welcome to raise your hand as well. And I could um, unmute your microphone and you can speak if you prefer that over typing. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it. Um, Oh, hello, Neil. Thanks for the update. That's great. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that the uh, freezing issue has uh, been resolving. Excellent. Okay, great. So let's get started. Um, now, um, I do want to pull your attention towards our website as well before we start. I'm, I'm all over the place today, guys. Sorry, I remember to remind you as well that we do have new exercise series coming up um, for the new year. So we have some uh, out in January and there will be more uh, coming out in the coming weeks as well. So um, don't forget to have a look on the website, sign up for more classes if you like. Um, and we do have our global symposium series coming up next week. We've got three three um, uh, talks coming up in the Global Symposium and the speakers are all really excellent. They're big, big names in Parkinson's disease. So you definitely don't want to be missing that. Have a look on our website for the Global Symposium series that's coming up next week. Okay, that's it for me. I'll stop talking so we can exercise. I'm going to move back a little bit so you can see me. I'll just tip the screen down. So in our chair today, you can see that I'm in a wheelie office chair, but when you're at home, um, ideally I want you to be in a, in a stationary chair that doesn't have wheels, but I've got wheels here so I can quickly turn around and show you different angles. Um, but when you're at home, ideally a stable chair so then you don't end up falling off the chair as you're doing some of these movements today. So warming up our shoulders, rolling the shoulders up towards our ears, and then bringing them back. So really trying to get shoulders in a circle rather than an up and down position. We're doing a circle back, yeah. Hopefully you can hear my voice okay today. Um, I've got my headphones in, but for some reason I can't get the uh, microphone to work very well. So it might sound a little echoey, but I'm hoping that you can still hear me and it's not too distracting. Circling the elbows back. If you've got cracking shoulders or painful shoulders or something doesn't feel quite right, you can go a little lower. You don't have to necessarily go quite as high. And then the entire arm as well. So 
So the same thing here, if you don't want to be circling the entire arm, you, you can do a little bit lower if you find that you've got painful shoulders and you can't quite get up high. That's okay as well. Try to sit up nice and tall if you can. So try not to be in the slouching position because as soon as you're in that slouching position, it's going to be pretty tough for you to circle the arms. Okay, and rest. Take your hand, reach to the outside of the opposite knee, or in the back, outside of the opposite knee. The other hand's gonna turn around and grab hold of the back of the chair. Using your arms, you're gonna rotate yourself around such that you're looking at the back wall. We're trying to sit up as tall as we can here, rotating around to the back. And then release, same to the other side. Take your hand. Hold on to the opposite knee, other arm grabbing around the chair, twisting around nice and tall. Really rotating your body on the spot here. And then release. Now we're going to take our hands behind the head. We're going to shuffle back in our chair so that the, uh, your back is against the backrest arms up behind the head, really open those elbows here, and we're going to lean back up and over into the chair, really open the chest, stretching the back, holding for three, two, one, and release. Lower the arms one more time, bring the arms up behind the head, opening the elbows, and leaning back, arching back into the chair, just being careful not to tip the chair, but you're leaning back into the chair to stretch your back. And release. Float the arms up. We're going to pull the elbows back and bring them forth. So from the side, I'm pulling the elbows back and I'm squeezing the shoulder blades together and then bringing them forward. So you can see my wheelie chair comes in handy here. <laughs> Try to get the shoulders away from the ear. So don't let yourself do this. You want to keep the neck nice and long, squeezing those elbows back, squeezing the shoulder blades and bringing them forward. Three more. Two more. Last one, and rest. Okay, float one arm up. We're gonna start with squeezing of our arm from the shoulder all the way down the arm. You probably remember this from previous weeks. If you're new, we're just waking up some of those senses in our arms, waking up those nerve endings, doing a little bit of sensory loading here. Squeezing down the length of the arm, including the wrists, the fingers, the palms, One more. And let's switch. Same to the other side, starting at the top of the shoulder, squeezing down the arm. It's almost like giving yourself a bit of a massage. <laughs> to your thumbs, your palm, your fingers the entire length of the arm back up again. One last one, squeezing all the way down the length of the arms. Not forgetting about your palm, your fingertips. And rest. Other side again. This time we're going to tap down the length of the arm. So light taps. We're not smacking the arm, but light taps down the back of the arm all the way to the fingertips. And then flipping to the other side, the inside of the arm, light taps all the way down the length of the arm. And same to the other side, tapping down the length of the arm, back of the arm first. 
or it doesn't really matter. You can do the inside of the arm, but we'll just make sure you get both. And then the other side of the arm. And rest. We're gonna clasp our hands together like so. And then without moving the elbow, so we're not doing this. Keeping the elbows down, we're drawing a big figure of eight with our wrists. So a little bit of twisting here, warming up the wrists, warming up the forearms, make sure your elbows are bent. Because if you're like this, it's a little bit of a different movement. We want to try and bend those elbows. Okay, so to start, um, if you are new, I usually have a table in front of me. You can't see the table right now, but it's here. And um, I usually use the table to rest my elbows on just because that way we're, I'm not trying to hold up my arm for the entire um, hour, which you might find to be a little bit tiring. Um, so you can either have a table or maybe if you have arm rest, you can use that as well. Uh, just being careful not to hit your arm on anything. Okay, we are starting with some closing into fists and then opening. We're just gonna do closing and opening for a little bit. Squeezing in those fingers, opening the hand nice and wide, spreading those fingers as wide as you can. And as you're doing this warm up here for your hand, I want you to really think about the symmetry of your hand, okay? So if one hand is like this or like this, See if you can get both sides even, really spread out the, the weaker side or the stiffer side here as much as you can. Try to get symmetry on both sides. Flatten out the palm as well. Don't let the, don't let the uh, thumbs come in like this. You want to open as much as you can. Good, nicely done. Let's do three more here. Really spreading those fingers open, elongating the fingers. One more. Okay, and rest for a second. Okay, our first exercise, we're gonna start with our fingers nice and wide, palm nice and wide. So try not to let the thumbs creep in. You wanna keep them open, almost like you're placing your hand on something, okay? From here, we're going to keep all the fingers nice and wide, nice and long, and we're gonna tap our index finger to our thumb one time, like this, without the other fingers curling. And then we're gonna tap our middle finger to our thumb two times, one, two, without any of the other fingers curling in and make sure the thumb opens back out every time. Then we're gonna tap our ring finger to our thumb three times, one, two, three, noticing how all my fingers stay open. I'm not curling them in. Little finger to the thumb four times. One, two, three, four, and open back up. And then I'm gonna reverse. Little finger to the thumb once. Ring finger to the thumb twice. One, two, open all the way back up every time, okay? Middle finger to the thumb three times. One two, three, open back up. Index finger to the thumb four times. And then we repeat from the beginning. So tapping once, twice, three times, four times and reverse. In your own time here. And of course, as you're doing this movement, I want you to really focus on the symmetry of your hand. So don't let your fingers curl in like this as we're doing the movement, okay? So it's almost like you're trying to keep all of your fingers pointing outward, almost like you got rays of light coming out of each finger and you want to shine them everywhere like a disco ball. So don't let them curl in. Don't let the thumb stay in, okay? So when you open back out, your thumb comes with you. I know, lots to think about here.
work on that symmetry here really open the finger spread the palm don't let your fingers come in together don't let them do this don't let them do this open them nice and wide And if you are getting the technique of this exercise, by all means, you can go faster. But if you're going faster and your fingers are starting to do this, you need to slow down again because we want to make sure the technique of the movement stays the same and we're not losing the quality of movement just because we're going fast, right? How are we doing? Are we remembering to flatten the thumb back out every time? Spreading the fingers every time? How's our symmetry? Hopefully both hands are looking pretty much the same. Or if not, you're trying to keep them as similar as possible. Okay, wherever you are, do one more set, and then we're going to move on. Okay, and shake it out. Okay. Our next one is going to be our long finger one, the one where we're thinking about pressing your hand against like an imaginary glass window and you're peering inside the window. So your hand is nice and flat. So we're not curving in in any way. Fingers long, squeezing together, palm nice and flat. And we're going to open the first web space here once. And then the second space twice but all the fingers are squeezing together, right? So all the fingers are together unless it's the space that's being opened. The next one three times. Then the next one four times. All my fingers are squeezing together, including the thumb. And then you reverse. So starting with the little finger once, the next space over two times, next space over three times, Keeping all your fingers squeezing together nice and long four times. So I don't want to see anyone do this or, or have some of the fingers wide open as other ones are open too. You're trying to be very distinctive about which finger space you are opening. So remember you're opening once, twice, three times and four times and then reverse. If this is really difficult for you, you're welcome to place your hand onto a surface. It doesn't have to be a table, it could be a window, um, a door, whatever you've got. And you're trying to keep all the fingers together except for the space that you're actually trying to open, if that makes sense. This one tends to be a bit harder than the previous one. So really think about your symmetry here as well. So don't let one hand curl in or let the thumb fold across. You want to really think about getting both sides as equal as possible. Fingers nice and long, including the thumb. As I talk, I uh, distract myself. 
So I lose count of what I'm doing, but that's okay. You, you get the idea. So keeping all your fingers together, don't let the thumb come apart unless you're doing the thumb part. So you're only opening the spaces between the fingers that you're intending to open. The rest of the time, you're squeezing all the fingers together. How are we doing with this one? Anyone feeling in their hand yet? <laughs> Fingers feeling sore yet? One more set, wherever you are, whatever your speed, one more set, and then we're going to move on. And shake it out when you finish that one. Okay. So our next one, we are going to use our tea towel. So whether you have a square tea towel or a rectangle one, doesn't really matter. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to fold it so that it's in a long shape. So if your tea towel is a square, well, this is not a square, but <laughs> you can still fold it into a, a length um, sort of a long lengthwise position. And what we're going to do here, so you can see I've got a whole uh, length of uh, rolled or folded towel here. I'm going to start at one side and we're going to practice wringing the towel. So you're going to imagine the towel is wet and you're trying to get rid of as much of the water as possible. And you're going to bring your hands together and you're gonna ring in the opposite direction. So both your hands are twisting in the opposite direction. And then you slide down the towel and you do the same thing all the way down the length of the towel, making sure both of your hands are ringing equally. So we're not just doing one side, right? But we're doing both. Make sure you've got symmetry here, both hands ringing equally. You'll probably find one hand is stiffer than the other, so it might be tough. But you're trying to wring both of your hands equally here as much as you can, okay? And of course, if you actually add water, it will feel a little tougher. Once you get to the end of your towel and you run that last bit, you're going to reverse. Reverse the direction all the way back. Make sense? So if the first time going that way, I went this way, then going back that way, I'm going to go this way. So you're ringing in the opposite direction here. Hopefully that made sense. I was uh, using my head <laughs> as the indicator of where to go, but hopefully you get what I mean. And same thing here. You want both of your hands to be ringing equally. So we're not just doing one side, right? We're doing both as much as we can. So squeezing with both hands and twisting with both hands equally, okay? And the same in the other direction. Good, squeezing both. and twisting back. So remember, once you get to the end, you're switching directions and ringing in the opposite direction on the way back as well. So this is a good one to practice. If you find that using a dry towel is pretty easy, you're welcome to, of course, do this in, in the bathroom. Maybe not now, because <laughs> we don't want to uh, be uh, getting water all over the computer, but you're welcome to, of course, soak the towel in water and um, actually try to wring out the towel as well. And of course, the thicker your towel, the more difficult it is because the more um, uh, heavy of a grip you have to make in order to actually get the water out. Whereas, you know, a thin and flimsy towel I've got at the moment, it's um, a little bit easier.
How are we doing on this one? Check in with yourself. How's your symmetry? Are we only twisting with one side or are we twisting equally? The twist is coming from the wrist. Of course, your arms move with that as well, but ideally it's um, coming mostly from your wrist. We're going to do two more. Wherever you are, we're going to do two more directions of this um, length of tower ringing, and then we will move on to the next exercise. So remember to change directions. When you get to the end of the towel, you're changing directions of which you're wringing the towel. And rest, you can shake out your arms, shake out your hand whenever you finish that one. And we're gonna open our towel back up now. You can see mine is all thin, so hence why now it's got little lines on them. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to hold on to the corner of your towel like so, and you want the towel to be hanging downwards, okay? And your fingers are pointing down <clears throat> and you are going to use your fingers and scrunch up that towel into your palm without the hand doing this. So we're not catching the towel into our fist, but we are pulling up the towel. So we're pulling the towel up into a fist. Try to get all your fingers moving, not just one or two, and having all the fingers stuck, not, nah, we're using all. When you bald it up into a ball and you can't go anymore, you're gonna throw and catch with the opposite hand. So when you catch, we're catching down. So it's almost like the towel gets thrown up and then as it's coming back down with gravity, you're speeding up that, that downward movement of the fabric and you're catching on the down as it goes down. And then once you catch it, you're going to use only that hand to uh, toss out the, 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 the towel again so that it's hanging down. And then again, just like the other side, you're going to pull the towel up into a ball in your fist with all your fingers, not just one, all your fingers. And then when you can't go anymore, you're going to throw catch with the other side. So with the catch, we're not doing this, we're not doing this, we're catching downward. Once you caught it, using only the hand that you caught, uh, using only the hand that you caught the towel in, you're going to hold on to the corner again. So we're not using both hands to open the towel, but you're using that one hand. And then you repeat that again, pulling the towel upward into a fist. And then throw, catch, tossing out the towel, and then restarting. So we've been doing this one for a couple of weeks now and um, adding in the opposite hand catch is a new thing today. If you are new to the class and you're really struggling with the scrunching of the uh, towel part, what you can do is put the towel against the table, some kind of surface and then using that surface to help you. And that will make things easier. Now, 
That is the same as if you were to put this on your lap or against your, your shirt and then scrunching up. Same thing, you're putting it against the surface to scrunch up. So it will feel a little easier that way. Um, and uh, you can start with that if you need. That's absolutely fine. Obviously, eventually working towards a freehand kind of pulling up. So remember, the towel is hanging down the whole time and you're pulling it upwards rather than doing this kind of catching motion, which I'm sure some of you are probably doing, <laughs> even though I can't see you, but no cheating. Trying to let the towel hang down if you can. I know it's harder this way, but if it's not hard, there's no point doing it. Remember, once you catch the uh, towel in your other hand, you are shaking it out again, right? So you start again with the towel hanging down and you're hold, hopefully holding onto the corner. Let's do a few more here. We'll do one more on each side and then we'll give it a rest and move on to the next one. So take your time, in your own time is fine. Remember when you're scrunching, you're trying to use all of your fingers, not just one or two. Try not to get your fingers stuck. You want all of them to be moving. And once you've done those last two, we'll give it a rest and we'll move your towel aside. We are now going to grab our cushion and we are going to hold on to the bottom of the cushion with long fingers. So you can see here, my fingers are nice and long. And if I turn this way, you can see my thumb is nice and long. So you're kind of holding it like this, not like this. So we're not doing this, but we're keeping the fingers long, both the thumb and the fingers. And you're gonna grab hold of the bottom using that kind of um, uh, pincer grip. So it's almost like you're, imagine you're like a crab, <laughs> like a crab pincer sort of. You're keeping your fingers nice and long and then you're going to open your finger and catch the top of the cushion as it falls down. So it's like this, you open, Pillow falls down, you catch the top with that same straight finger position. So we're not catching like this. We're going back to that straight um, uh, finger position, even the thumb, right? And then from there, we're going to reverse it. So you're gonna toss the cushion up and catch the bottom in that long finger position. So not like this, long finger position again. And then we repeat, catch and then toss. But each time you touch the cushion, you are using that long finger grip. Whoops, don't do it like that, or I just missed the cushion completely. And as you're doing this, um, you, of course, depending on how big your cushion is, as you're tossing it, you might find that it turns a little bit. So try your best to kind of hold your elbows um, into your side, not necessarily tucking it, but just your elbows down. So that is truly just this movement and we're not 
you know, getting the arms involved as much as you can, even the tossing up your, your, yeah, you're moving the arms, but your elbows kind of stay in. So you're trying to keep the cushion as um, vertical as you can. So it doesn't kind of turn like this in the air. Of course, it will probably turn a little bit, um, especially if you got um, a, a bigger or longer cushion. I'm just reading a comment here. The Vulcan spot hand signal, yes. <laughs> okay, and um, that one tends to be harder. Yes, absolutely, because that movement is always a little bit unnatural. Um, so with the opening of the fingers there, uh, if you're finding it really tough, keep going with your cushion, by the way. I'm just going to turn my camera down. If you're finding that really hard, I would probably suggest doing it on a table first or even up against an actual window or door and you're sliding the fingers because having a surface underneath you makes it slightly easier so you're not doing it freehand and it might be that you need to start there and that's absolutely fine you might need to start with your hand on a surface it's harder on a wall than on a table just because of the way uh, your fingers are moving but you know having your hands so imagine my hands are up against a wall right now doing that is going to be a lot easier than you doing it off a wall and it might be that you need to start with that first or maybe you're doing one hand at a time and as you're doing that kind of middle opening you're, you're helping yourself do that because we're using the kind of the little muscles in our hands and our fingers as we're doing that so don't worry if it feels difficult that kind of sliding movement is much more difficult than this because that's not as natural we don't um you know i mean we do this kind of movement more as you're picking things up you know and we don't really squeeze the hand in this much but the reason we're still working on that is because in order to have that hand dexterity we need to be able to conform and change the shape of our hand to match whatever object we're holding or picking up. And even though we, we don't really pick objects up in this case, it's still good to do these kind of movements because we're working on these tiny little muscles, as you can probably feel, it gets quite sore in the hand, to try to kind of improve the agility of our hand and fingers here. So if you need to start with your hand against something, absolutely fine, start that way. It does get easier. Keep in mind, you've only been doing this you know, once a week for what, four weeks now. So it's not a lot that you've actually been doing, but if you practice every day, it does take several weeks for you to actually, you know, sometimes see the progression and that's absolutely fine. So keep persevering, don't give up hope. It's okay to have that exercise be quite tough. Just use a table, a wall, something like that to help you initially. Or sometimes it helps if you, uh, you know, get a bucket of sand or mud and you're putting your hand in there and you're like smearing the mud with that kind of action works as well as a little bit of resistance. Let's do a few more here with the pillow. Hopefully you were keeping up with this pillow exercise as I was talking and hopefully you're not sneakily taking a break. <laughs> but if you were, get right back into it. We're gonna do a few more here, okay? So four more of these uh, drops or throws and catches. Okay, and rest it for a second. Shake out your hand if you need, open and close your fist a few times. Now we're gonna do our rotation here. So uh, let me turn it this way just because I have a little flap underneath. So uh, I'm holding, I'm, I'm holding the cushion kind of like in the same um, pincer fashion we, we were doing just now, except you're going in the middle this time and you want your thumb to be up, okay? So your thumb is facing up. You're going to toss the pillow up in the air, not high, just a little bit, and you're gonna turn it towards yourself like this and catching. So let me maybe do it on an angle here so you can see. So it's you want it to be completely um, flat, but I'm doing it on the angle so you can see. My thumb is up, my fingers are down, and they're in that long, that long grip. So you're essentially you're 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 flipping the cushion towards you and you're catching in that same way. So I'm catching in that same way with the thumb facing up. Can you see that? So I'm not I'm not throwing the cushion as high as I can, and I'm not trying to get as many turns as I can. I'm just flipping it once. 
like that and you're catching. Kind of make sense? Hopefully you saw that. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to see when it's just from one angle, but hopefully you can see that okay. I'll turn sideways. So my fingers are underneath, thumb on top, flipping towards me just once. I'm not tossing it up as high as I can, and I'm not, you know, turning the cushion as many times as I can. Just once. Going back to that pincer grip, trying not to do this kind of grip so we're not grabbing like this. We're keeping the fingers nice and long if we can. How are we sitting? Are we doing this? <laughs> are we sitting up nice and tall? Try to see if you can get yourself nice and tall, shoulders away from the ears. I'll turn back around, but keep going. Five more. Okay, now we are gonna turn our hand the other way this time so that our fingers are facing up and the thumb is facing down, but we're still not long grip. This time we're gonna flip the cushion away from you. So in the other direction, okay? So we're flipping in the other direction and still catching with your fingers on top and your thumb underneath. This might feel a little tougher. So if I go this way, maybe you can see my fingers are on top, thumb underneath, fingers nice and flat. Of course, feel free to do it slower. It doesn't have to be a quick thing. Five more. When you've done your five, you're going to put your cushion away. And you can shake up the hand, move the hand uh, into fists opening in, opening up whatever you need to kind of shake out the hand a little bit. You can give yourself a little squeeze if that feels nice on your thumbs. Just gonna reset here. And then we are now moving on to our handwriting. So last time we had, um, and I think I have my papers here. Last time we had uh, our rows changing uh, shape. Do you remember we went from big to small, small to big and so on? So today we are going back to our straight lines, just like we did in the previous weeks. Remember our previous, um, oh, sorry, this is from last time, the previous week where we had straight lines and we did small letters. So last time we had four, four little rows as one big row as our margins. Today we are doing three, three little rows. You can see one, two, three as one big margin. So we made it slightly smaller, right? Makes sense, we made it slightly smaller. And I'm gonna turn my screen down so you can see, I'll, I will write backwards again. So you can see I've got my rows here, my margins. So the purpose of this, having the larger margins is we are aiming to see this handwriting exercise as a bit of an amplitude exercise, okay? So we're trying to touch the top and the bottom margins, or I'll move down here so you can see the top and the bottom margins every single time you write, okay? Today we're gonna go for numbers. So we are writing out the physical number. So we are writing, I'm gonna write backwards here, so apologies if this looks pretty messy, but uh, one, so you can see I've got top and the bottom margins, top and the bottom, top and the bottom. I'm touching the margins the entire time. So I'm writing the letter, or sorry, the, the, the letters of one. And then I am also 
writing the number one. Is that backwards? Oh, it's backwards. Sorry. <laughs> writing backwards is harder than it looks. Okay. So that's my one. Okay. So I'm writing the word one and then writing the actual number one. And then I'm going to do the same thing for two. So you can see here, I've written the, num uh, the, the word two and then wrote the number two here. I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me just make the margins a little darker. So you can see I've touched the top and the bottom margin, top and bottom margin, top and bottom margin, top and bottom margin, top and bottom margin. So you're trying to write and fill out the entire margin here. You're filling out the entire margin. And uh, you can start slow, but once you get the hang of this, you're welcome to write a little bit quicker if you like, as long as you're still touching the margin. If your writing starting to get all small and like in a line, you want to slow it down and touch the margins again. So you can see three, three, okay? We're going up to 10, so we're going one to 10. I'm going to keep writing backwards here so it's a little easier for you to see. But if my uh, letters are looking backwards, I do apologize. Okay. Four, four. And you're going all the way down the lines. Kind of makes sense? So I would start slow first and just get the margins going. So touching the top and the bottom of the margins. Then once you've got the hang of it, you're welcome to write faster. But for the moment, you want to touch the margins. Don't let the writing get small. You're aiming for the margins here. to think there how to write seven backwards <laughs> so you can see here all my Letters and numbers are touching the top and the bottom margin the entire time. Oh no, ends backwards. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, okay. <laughs> Oh, I've done my nine backwards as a P. <laughs> but you get the idea. This is a nine, not a P. <laughs> Once you've gotten to 10, you're gonna repeat it, starting from one. And then once you've got the hang of it, you're of course welcome to write uh, bigger and bigger, or sorry, not bigger and bigger, faster and faster is what I mean, as long as you're still touching the margins. I know my camera's on a slant here, but if you are looking at what I'm doing, hopefully you can uh, see it okay. I need one of those uh, overhead cameras, I feel like. <laughs> you know, the ones they use on the cooking channel so you can see right above. 
But anyway, I'll lift it up every now and then so you can see it. So I know I'm not leaving a lot of space between um, each of my uh, letters and numbers here, but it's uh, mostly because my paper is a little smaller today. So I want to make sure I have enough room to do a bunch of practice. But of course, when you're doing it at home, leave spaces in between. How are we doing with this one? Hopefully you're doing okay. And hopefully you're hitting all the margins. You're welcome to speed up your writing once you uh, have the technique of hitting the margins down. But of course, if your writing is starting to become harder and harder to read, I challenge you to slow down again, just so that way you can go back to practicing the margins before you make it faster. Now, if you don't have line paper at home and you still wanna practice this, totally fine. You can draw your own margins. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight either um, because the activity here is not you writing in a straight line, but it's you following the margins and being able to touch the bottom and the top of the margin. So in fact, if your margins are not the same shape, that's, that's okay as well. It's kind of like what we practiced last week where we had margins changing in sizes and you're practicing staying with the amplitude of the movement of touching the top and the bottom margin. So you can see I'm trying to write faster and faster now that I've got the uh, backwards writing down. <laughs> so you're of course welcome to write faster and faster as well as long as you're still touching the top and the bottom margins. Okay, so you can see I filled out my entire page. Some of these letters are backwards because uh, I'm writing them upside down, <laughs> but you can see what I mean, touching the top and the bottom of the margin. So for next week, we are going to um, have the margins again, but this time we're going to do two. 
two rows as one giant row. So today we had one, two, three rows as one giant row. Next time we're only doing two. So we're only going to go one, two as our margin. So you can tell we're making the margin smaller and smaller. I show you on a blank piece of paper. Rather than today where we're going one, two, three as one giant margin. Next time I want you to draw one, two rows as one giant margin. So our margins are gonna get smaller and smaller. Okay, so next week, two rows as one giant margin. And then same equipment in terms of the towel and the pillow. Great, that's it, you did it. Shake out your hand, have a rest. And um, I will see you next week, same time, same place. And um, uh, don't forget the, the classes are recorded. So you're welcome to have a look on YouTube if you wanna practice um, these skills again. Okay, great, that's it. Thanks everybody, I'll see you next week. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. Stay dry if you're in BC and the storms are hitting you. <laughs> Stay inside, hopefully you don't lose your power and I will see you next week. Thanks everybody.